SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. My name is Edward Moses, and I'm the director of the National Ignition Facility at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. I'm also responsible for the general use of photons for science and applications at the, at the lab. So I've been in lasers for around 35 years now. My responsibility is to work with around 1,200 uh, really high quality people in, at the lab and literally hundreds, maybe thousands more outside of the lab to put together the NIF, the National Ignition Facility, which is the world's highest energy laser by about a factor of 100. This laser has 192 beams. They're in the ultraviolet and each one of them is the most energetic laser in the world. To put it together is quite a has been quite an interesting story. You know, it's been about a 10-year story, and it's all working now and operational, and we're, we've done some really interesting experiments for science, for energy, and for strategic issues as well. You know, we needed 200 tons of laser glass in 3,000 pieces that had no impurities, low water content, um, incredibly good surfaces. And uh, this was a, you know, and they were neodymium. We invented neodymium phosphate glass. We put it together with Hoya and Schott. And that is a tremendous story. We decreased the, the cost of glass over an order of magnitude uh, volumetrically. And the, and the quality of it is much better. We also had to learn how to build very large KDP and, and deuterated KDP, KDP crystals to double and then triple the light. So we went from crystals, rapid growth crystals that were about this big to, thing, to crystals that were over 700 kilograms, transferred that to industry Cleveland crystals. That worked very well. And it goes on and on like this. It's a, just a great story. Last summer and fall, we did our first series of experiments on the NIF. That was also very gratifying that we were able to bring the facility on so quickly and go over a megajoule in the ultraviolet and shoot targets and start understanding um, how well our design codes for how ignition and burn will work compared to the experiments we were doing. Um, and, and it was very nice to see what, how well it worked. In fact, we moved much more quickly last summer and fall than we had expected. We extend the, uh, extended the experiments about six weeks and gathered a lot of data on laser plasma interactions and um, physics and implosions. And when we were happy with that, we stopped and you know, reviewed our data and decided to get the facility literally ready for ignition experiments. And to get ready for that, you know, we had to put in ignition diagnostics you know, so we could do neutron experiments. Uh, we had to put in bring the laser up to higher energies. You know, we were over, we were around a megajoule, we're bringing it up to almost two megajoules in the next few months. And we had to put in the safety systems and all of the equipment that would allow us to do those experiments. That period of time called our ignition preparation project is right, is ending right now. We have an idea about how to really accelerate inertial fusion energy you know, from, you know, that always 50 years in the future to maybe 10 to 20 years from now. You know, the, uh, the question of when is fusion going to happen or how we, we're going to do it, it's not going to be a surprise when we do it. You know, there's a very deliberate set of experiments that have been uh, mapped out and peer-reviewed and re-reviewed and to, that sort of go through the physics of understanding to the level you have to, the laser plasma interactions in the hull ROM, you know, the little can when it gets really hot, goes up to 300 volts. Uh, understanding implosions, understanding forming ice lasers, DT ice layers, and how they implode and how they mix and how you prevent mix. And we have a great way of doing this using tritium hydrogen deuterium targets. So very high in tritium, very low in deuterium. That sounds a little bit funny because you know, deuterium is sort of the oxygen of a tritium fire. And if you don't put much deuterium in it, you can do all these physics at full ignition conditions without a lot of yield. And uh, the thing that's unusual to people when they first hear that is why would you want to do that? And that's because you can have all your diagnostics very close. And all of them can be doing all the work they would do. That cannot happen during a, 
a DT shot because they would be damaged. So we're doing that and we expect to, by you know, this time next year, sort of be through the, all of that. So our goal will be uh, you know, in this coming calendar year, 2011, to really try to unravel all the mysteries that are to come in understanding the fusion experiments and be ready. I think the last 50 years have been really exciting since the laser was born, but I think the next 50 years are gonna to be totally uh, much more exciting than this.